Religion has been around for quite some time, and at times it may seem that the existence of entire nations depends upon a certain religion or two. With all of that in mind, we are led to a very complex question. Do civilized societies need religion? Because time is short, we certainly don't have all day, and the attention span of humans has proven to be quite short, today we're going to focus on two subsidiary guiding questions. First, to what extent does religion dictate a person's view on right and wrong? But what does that mean, you may ask? So the concept of right versus wrong regards the basic prin principles of ethics. Secondly, to what extent does religion determine how societies are organized? This one is more focused on the group and not so much on the individual, and his or her own actions. With this in mind, we analyze the concept of hierarchy and predetermined social classes inside a specific society. In order to answer those questions, we need something to base ourselves on. This is where the three religions we're going to analyze come in. They are Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam. However, it would be rather pointless to just start analyzing things from here and there without a proper introduction of each religion. So first, let's start with the older guys, the Hindus. It is not only the oldest existent religion, but also the world's third largest religion with a billion followers across the globe. It first originated in India, but nowadays there are millions of Hindus in every continent. Hindus believe it is based on a series of concepts, reincarnation, one absolute being of multiple manifestations, karma, which could also be known as the law of cause and effect following the path of righteousness, and a desire for liberation from the seemingly internal cycle of reincarnation. And now we can move on to the largest religion in the world, Christianity. Christianity has over 2 billion followers in the entire world, so that would mean that, if the world was perfectly scientific and based on statistics, if you had 100 friends, 28.6 of them would be Christian. Well, maybe the point six is someone who is only Christian 60% of the time. Who knows? Well, Christians also focus on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, as well as follow the words of the New and Old Testaments in their holy book, the Bible. They also believe that there is only one God, but that he is revealed in the three different forms, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Trinity. Finally, our third and last religion for today is Islam. Islam has been around for about 1,400 years. Its followers believe in Allah and follow the words of the Quran. But Muslims share the fundamental concept of unity through the Ummah, which is the idea of the entire Muslim community coming together to support one another. Along with the Ummah, there are other con fundamental concepts that can open the door or at least get our foot into the grand door of knowledge of the Islamic religion for us poor mortals. They are the main idea of Tawhid, which regards the worship of the only existent God, Allah, the major sin of Shirk, that stands for the sin of practicing idolatry towards multiple people or objects or gods, the desire of Muslims to follow the Risalah, the message of Allah as revealed to the Prophet, and finally the concept of Yan al-Din, which is the Judgment Day. Whew. Okay, so now we can get onto the questions. First, does religion dictate a person's view on right and wrong? For the most part, yes. Of course religion can influence those who are not part of it, but there are several policies inside religion systems that guarantee that a person will view certain actions as right and certain actions as wrong. Well, let's look at Hinduism. Through the concept of karma and rebirth, one can gain good or bad karma, which then defines whether they'll be re reborn into a better or worse form. This leads to one of the most straightforward connections between right versus wrong and punishment. Things that bring good karma and bad karma are considered what is right and wrong. Now for Christianity. Christianity poses several recommended practices presented through the Bible, such as the Ten Commandments. Christianity also is less straightforward than Hinduism. Through the image of Jesus Christ, people can see what is defined as a moral and rightful life. Finally, Islam. The Islamic religion has a certain number of laws and practices which are expected to be followed by its believers. However, since rules are dictated through texts, they might be interpreted in different ways depending on who reads it. Therefore, one can easily trust what he or she is doing is right, even though it isn't. Due to the fact that Islam has a strict set of rules, sometimes following those rules and always acting based on religious beliefs can cloud a person's judgment on what is right and wrong. The person doesn't act based on personal instincts or morality. They act based upon what the religion has established that is right. However, there are several counterclaims to the idea that religion does dictate a person's view of right and wrong, which are the following. 
Contrary to what many people might think, Christianism does not have an image of haters, those who do not believe in God. This shows how there is no validity way of being a good person. Instead, the religion focuses on teaching people to have their own opinion, while helping them to live a life that is balanced and humble. Also, even though Islam was created to unify everyone under one religion with common beliefs, the difference between Sunni and Shia has created the distinction in what is right and wrong. The contrast between what the way texts are evaluated in each group changes a person's perspective. So in conclusion, even though religious texts and concepts are susceptible to human interpretation, religious systems can and do influence a person's view on right and wrong. Now on to the second question. Does religion determine how societies are organized? Religion often plays a role in the establishment of social classes, either by providing religious justifications for why one is more or less favored, or by stating that the existence of different social classes and economic classes is just part of the natural state of human existence. So for Hinduism. Hinduism is divided into different castes, so the society is broken down into several different people. Uh, the first one are the Brahmins, which are the priests. Then come the Kshatriyas, which are warriors and rulers, though this would be soldiers that would defend a kingdom. Then we have Vaishyas, which are merchants and landowners, so someone who would sell something to you or would own a piece of the farm. And then there are the Sudras, which are the commoners, peasants, and servants, so these would be the working class, and the untouchables, the outcasts. And this influenced India's own organization of social classes, and while the caste system is banned nowadays, the belief of a natural-born social class is still strong in a great part of the population. Now for Christianity. Christianity uses a system of churches to spread the word of the God. However, this is played, just like any other religion, by the human nature which can be clouded by wrong thoughts. This has led to several scandals which are seen with right and wrong eyes, since it judges the religion as a whole, not under a certain person. Now for Islam. There are many countries who have non-secular governments, which means that the laws and obligations of those societies are built based on religion. Examples of this are Iran, Afghanistan, Egypt, and etc. Therefore, in the case of Islam, in certain places, religion is completely influential in the way societies are set. Since Islam wants to join everyone under one common belief, in what is called the Muslim community, the Ummah, it maintains a certain neutral perspective not imposing its religion. This is true under a theoretical ideal of Islam as told by the Prophet Muhammad. Now for the Crown Claims, Christianity. The Holy Book states that under the eyes of God, everyone is equal no matter how much money they ha have or the position in society. Therefore, does not prioritize or condemn rich or poor people, but tells them that everyone is observed equally and will be judged equally. Now in conclusion, while throughout history religion has played a large role in determining that people would conform to their social positions, not all religions provide a predetermined set of ideas of how societies should be organized themselves, and some even preach the non-distinction between social classes regarding morality and righteousness. So in conclusion, at the time that they were first established, most religions were fundamental pillars for the creation of the set of rules that dictated how people should act in order to create an organized society. Religions were created to explain things that we couldn't explain about the world and to answer the three essential questions. Religion also became a reason to create many different laws and dictate what is right and wrong. Civilized societies need religion to explain things that can't be explained by sands and to help understand what is wrong and what is right, as well as answering the three essential questions.